Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Teresa and I'm really glad you guys have decided to join me today. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a project using this wooden stocking that I picked up at the Target dollar spot and it was three dollars. So if you're interested to see what I do with the stocking, stick around and we'll get started. Okay, so I am going to go through the list of supplies that you're going to need to complete this project, but I'm also going to leave a list down below for you in my description box as well. So the first thing you're going to need is your stocking. And again, I purchased this at the Target dollar spot for just $3. Now they have several different wood decor items, like they have the Christmas tree, a heart, and I believe a star. You're going to need some fabric of your choice, and I am going to be using this microfiber cloth from the Dollar Tree, and you find this in the automotive section. And if you don't want to use um, this or any fabric, you could also paint the entire stocking as well. Then you will need some paint, and um, I am going to use my Waverly chalk paint that I get at Walmart and I'm going to be using the red or lacquer, the black or ink, and then the elephant which is a darker gray. You will also need your hot glue gun and hot glue as well as either Mod Podge or Tacky Glue. And I'm going to be using Tacky Glue. And I purchased that at the Dollar Tree. And you get about three or four ounces in the jar. And I just thought that's a great deal for a buck. Can't beat it. And then you will need either a Sharpie or a paint pen. As well as a ruler. No, oh, paint brushes. <laughs> Now your ruler. <laughs> and then whatever embellishments you want. And I just grabbed my twine. And I do purchase my twine at Walmart. Just because I use it so much, it's more bang for my buck. And then you're also going to need some scissors. So now to get started, we are going to start by painting our base coat on our stocking and I'm going to be using like I said the red and I did do two coats of the red you could just do one if you wanted to which would be absolutely beautiful because you really could see the wood grain coming through but that just wasn't the look that I was going for with this um and you, you may be able to see it here in a second with how it comes through. But again, I just did two coats. And I did do the um, sides all the way around to make sure that that red was on, on the sides of the stocking as well. Then you're going to let it dry. And once it's dry, we're going to come back in and we're going to make the lines to our buffalo check and I just did my lines the width of the ruler so those are what's going to make our square so each of my squares are going to be basically the width of my ruler and I'm going to do that vertically as well as horizontally I'm just going to do that all the way across and then all the way down the stocking. And then when you're done putting on your lines, you're going to come in and you're going to do your first coat of the gray paint. And I, this gray to me, it wasn't dark enough. So what I did was I darkened it down with some of the black. And I wanted it more of a charcoal gray color. So I just, and you just add your black until you get it to the color that you want and I was real happy with that color there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting my horizontal lines on my stocking all the way down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do every other every other row. So I started at the top with the horizontal lines 
and I did only one coat of the gray. It honestly did not need more than one coat. And I just did that all the way down. And the paintbrush that I'm using is a flat tipped paintbrush, which gives you just a little bit better control, or at least me, um, when I'm filling in those lines and not wanting to um, get it into the red. But I mean, if you do it, if you get a little of the gray in the red, that's fine. I think it would, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. So there I've got it all done vert or horizontally. So now I'm going to come back through and do them vertically. And for the vertical, I did skip a row. So I, instead of starting my gray on the edge, I went in one row, okay? And then again, you're just going to paint in those gray squares all the way across your stocking. And then you're going to let that dry. And when you come back in to do the black, um, how you're going to determine which squares are black. I'm going to show you here. I'm just trying to show you how if you want to keep, if you want to continue to use that gray paint, wrap the t your bristles of your brush with some saran wrap and it will keep them nice and wet for you. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so now as you see, I'm starting my black. And how you're going to determine what sh which squares are black is the, the squares of gray that intersect are going to be your black squares, if that makes sense. So again, you're going to take each square that intersects, that's gray, the two intersecting gray squares, and paint those black. And I will link um, Jerry Ann Henson's channel if you're not familiar with her. Because um, she gives a really good description and explanation of how to do the buffalo check. And I will link that down below in my description box for you. But as you see, and I just did the one coat of black as well. And I did use a smaller brush just so I had better control of those squares. Since I want it to be pretty precise. And... Then I'm going to finish that up, let it dry, and then we're going to come back and we're going to put our fabric on. So in order to do the fabric, what I did was I just opened up the uh, microfiber cloth and I flipped it over so that I was working with the back of the cloth. And then I put my stocking down and I just traced the pattern of the cuff around on the fabric. Then I just cut it out, and I'm going to leave about a half an inch to an inch of excess fabric on the top and sides. So that way they can wrap around easily to the back. So now you're going to come in with either your um, tacky glue or Mod Podge, and you're going to put a nice coat, nice thick coat, on the front of the stocking as well as the sides and a little bit on the back where the fabric is going to lay down on the fat on the back. And don't worry about the hole because we're not going to use it, so I just it didn't matter if there was glue in it or not. And then here I'm just going to kind of trim it down a little bit cuz I just had a little too much. And you're basically just going to make sure it's nice and 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 attached with that glue and just let it dry. So now after it's all dry, we're going to embellish it. So I'm showing you here, I'm going to be using the wooden letters from the Dollar Tree as well as the little jingle bells. So before I do anything else, I want to paint my letters white. And I'm using the Waverly White chalk paint. And I just do one coat and make sure you get the edges as well. And while these dry, you can do it, it, they dry so fast because that wood just really absorbs that paint. So now I am going to sand this down a little, I'll rough it up. So I'm just using a piece of Scotch-Brite, um, which is kind of like a steel wool, but you just want to use a fine grit sandpaper or sanding block to do that. And then now I want to age my bell. So I'm going to take my gray chalk paint and just paint 
I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just kind of want to paint it, paint it on there. And then you're going to, I'm going to come back in with my black paint and I'm just going to lightly dip the edges of my bristles into the black paint, dab any excess off, and then I'm going to just kind of pounce that onto the bell just to deepen the color a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my white. But the white I want to be very, very light. So I blend it really, really well, get most of that white paint off of there. And it just basically gives the bell a little bit of a galvanized look. And I just love the way it looks when, it, when it's done. So then we're going to set that aside, let it dry while we make our bow. So here I'm just measuring the size of my loops. I'm just going to cut it off. And then I'm just messing around with how I want to hold it and the size of my loops. And then I'm going to come in and cut some twine because that's how I tie my bows when I make them this way. But before I do that, I want to make some tails. <laughs> so I cut a piece of, ta of ribbon for my tails. And then I'm going to tie it with my twine. And you're just going to tie it in a knot, one good piece. Cut off your excess twine. And then just use a little dab of hot glue on that knot just so it doesn't slip off. Then you're going to dovetail it, which you're going to fold those that piece in half. And then you're going to cut it from the open end at an angle up towards the closed end. And that's how you get your dovetail. Now I'm not putting any of the, the ribbon in the center because I'm using the bell. But if you weren't using the bell, you could just take another piece of your ribbon, fold it in thirds, and attach it to the center to cover up the twine. Then you just hot glue the bow on to the stocking and then the bell right on top of the bow in the center there. Now we're going to put our letters on. You just run a bead of hot glue down the center of each of your letters and stick them on there. And that's it, you guys. And I just love the way this turned out. I am beyond happy. <laughs> It is actually better than my, it was in my head. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a great big thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that red subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. And hit the little bell that will send you a notification every time I upload new videos. And if you know anybody who would like to see this and see how I made this, please hit that share as well. And please leave your comments, questions, or suggestions down below in the comments section because I love to hear from each and every one of you. And as always, guys, from me to you, great big hugs. Stay tuned to the end so you can see the pictures that I have for you as well. So have a great night. Bye, guys.